Adding commands to your Roblox game can be really easy and really helpful. Imagine you're adding a brand new feature to your game and you want to quickly test it out without having to implement it fully. What you could do is add a command directly to your game to do exactly that, run the command, and then you can see if it actually worked. It can even be useful for debugging as well. For instance, in the game that I'm currently in, you have the ability to upgrade one of your stats and that'll effectively increase the range every single time the stat is increased. So imagine I wanted to see how large this radius actually is around the player. I create a command to do this so that I can run the command and I can see how large the radius would be if their stat was at a 10. Additionally, it can even be useful for moderating your game as well. You could create your own ban command or for instance, it comes with a default kick command and all you have to do is enter in a player's name and they will be kicked from your game. So now, hopping directly into Studio, adding commands to your game is really simple. Inside my game currently, I have one script inside of the server script service and that is just to set up simple leader stats. So anytime a player joins the game, they will be given leader stats with a cache any gems number value and the reason for this is because we're now going to add commands to our game and then i'm going to show you how you can script your own command so that we can modify a player's leader stats value so the name of the module that we're going to be using today is cmdr and we'll be referring to it as commander so there's a link down below in the description to the website which you're going to go to and inside of here you could follow their guide or just follow through with the video but you're going to want to download the latest release of the module by going to their github right here and on this page you're going to want to scroll down all the way down below contributors and then you're going to see assets and right here, you're going to want to download cmdr.rbxm. Then once you have that downloaded, you're going to want to go into the replicated storage and we're going to add a brand new folder inside of here. And we're going to rename this to utils because I like to store all of my external or non-created modules in a folder like this so that I know all of the different APIs or libraries or modules that I'm using. Now that we have this folder, we're going to right click on it and we're going to click insert from file. Then go to wherever you save the cmdr.rbxm file at, click on it and click on open and you should see a module script has been inserted directly into this folder. Now that we have the commander module inside of replicated storage, we need to set it up on the server side. So we're going to go inside of our server script service, add a brand new folder, and we'll rename this to CMDR, or you could rename it to commands or however you prefer. Then inside of this folder, we're going to add a brand new script and we'll rename this to startup. Then inside of the script, we're going to create a variable for the replicated storage. And then we also need to create a variable for the commander module as well. So we're going to say local CMDR equals require replicated storage.utils.cmdr just like that. Now that we have the module, all we have to do is run the register default commands method from the module. And this will register all of the default commands that come with commander. Now that we set this up on the server side, we then also have to set this up on the client side as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the starter player, into the starter player scripts and add a brand new local script to this. And we'll rename that from local script to cmdr. Then we pretty much have to do the exact same thing. So we're going to just grab these two variables right here, get the replicated storage and commander but when we require commander we're actually going to do it a little bit differently so we're actually going to say wait for child and then cmdr client so now that we've got the commander on the client we're going to say commander and then run the set activation keys method which is going to accept an array of different key codes that you can actually press to activate the commander terminal to display on your screen so for instance we can say enum.keycode.f2 and now whenever we click f2 it will pop up or if we wanted to add another key code we could also do that as well so f3 and f2 now we can actually start up our game and once we begin the game we can click f2 or f3 or any of the key codes that we actually assign to this and we can see that this terminal pops up right here since on the server side we actually ran the register default commands method we actually have a variety of commands already given to us for instance the kick command that we displayed in the intro allows us to kick any player from our game that we want to if you're curious about all the different default commands that are included with commander this is the list right here and now that we know all of the default commands we can use any that we want now you're probably curious of how we can actually implement our own commands so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the commander folder and we're actually going to add a brand new folder to this and we'll rename this to commands now the command that we're going to create is to modify our leader stats so we're going to go inside of the commands folder and add a brand new module script inside of here and we'll rename this to modify leader stats now this module has to be set up a very specific way so follow along with me you're going to replace the default contents of a module script and by saying return and then we're going to return a table now inside this table it's going to have a couple of different properties so first of all we're going to have the name property which is going to be set to a string and that's going to be the name of your command the name of this command should be modify leader stats 
just like that. After we define the name, we then need to put a semicolon at the end of that property. And our next property is aliases. And that's actually going to be set to a table. And inside of here, we can basically define more names that we want to be able to access our command by. So for instance, a shorter way of typing out this command could be ML. So if you just type out ML, that would stand for modify leader stats. And then you can also access the command this way as well. Or let's say we wanted to type out modify and then just L. And then we could also use the command that way as well. Then once you've defined all of your aliases, all you have to do is put another semicolon at the end of that property. And the next we have is description. And that's going to be set to a string, which is just going to describe what your command actually does. So for instance, this modifies the leader stats value of a player. Once again, semicolon at the end of that. Next is group. And we're going to set that to admin as most of our commands are that by default. Then after that, we have args, which is equal to a table. And inside of this table, we are going to list each of the different arguments that our command is actually going to accept. And in this way, you can kind of think about creating a command similar to creating a function. Because with the name property, we're basically defining the name of the function. And inside of the args, we're defining each of the individual arguments that this function is going to accept. Now, each individual argument is contained with inside of a table. So right now, args is set to a table and there's going to be more tables inside of this individual table. So we're going to create a new table. And now to create an argument, we need to define the type property. Now we can, and I will show you how we can create our own types, but Commander actually comes with a wide variety of their own types defined as well. So the first argument that we're going to want to create is going to be the player whose leader stats we actually want to modify. So for the type, we're going to say player, then use a semicolon. Then we need to define the name of the argument, which is going to be displayed to us when we click F2 and start typing out this command. So we can just say player, once again, semicolon, and then we have to say description and give a description of what this specific argument is used for. So we'll say the player whose leader stats we want to modify and semicolon at the end. Now that argument is done. And now we can add another argument to this as well. So we're going to put a comma at the end of this table where we just defined this first argument. And we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And now we have a second argument. Now when we run this command, we want there to be actually three total arguments. The first one is the player whose leader stats we actually want to modify. The second would be the specific leader stat that we want to modify. Because remember, inside of our leader stats, we have either the cash or the gems. So we want to be able to choose between either of those two. And then finally, the third argument would actually be the value that we want to adjust just the player's gems or cash too. And I'll show you guys how to do that. But for right now, we're just going to make our first command and then we'll come back to this and make our own type. So for the second argument, we're going to say the type is actually going to be a string because we want it to either be cash or gems. And the name of this is going to be stat because once again, we're choosing between cash or gems. And the description is going to be the stat of the leader stats we want to modify. And now we can go ahead and make a third argument by once again, copying, pasting this. And for the third argument, we want it to actually be a number because we want to set the value. So for for the name, it's also going to be value. And for the description, the value we want to set the stat to. And now this is all good for creating the command. And now the next thing we need to do is we actually need to start scripting the command on the server side. Because basically what we did right now is a way for commander to understand that this is a command. So to start scripting the functionality of this command, what we need to do is we need to add another module script. And we actually need to rename this to the exact name of our previous module script. So modify leader stats, but then we need to add the word server onto the end of it. And inside of here, instead of returning a module, what we need to do is we actually need to return a function. Now the first argument of this function is always going to be context as that's provided to us by commander. And every argument after this is going to be based on the specific command that you created. So if we look back at when we created the command, we have a player argument, a string argument, and then a number argument as well. So the name of our first argument is probably going to be player. The name of the second argument is probably going to be stat. And the name of the third argument is probably going to be value. So for our first custom argument, we're going to say player, and that's going to be equal to a player. The next one is going to be stat, which is going to be equal to a string. And the final argument is going to be value, which is going to be equal to a number. Now that we have our function set up, we can start scripting this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local leader stats equals player find first child leader stats. If we don't find the leader stats, then we probably just want to return n because there's really nothing to do if the player doesn't have leader stats on them. Otherwise, what we can do is we can say leader stats and then index that with a specific stat. And then we could just say equals value. And that would set the value of a specific leader stat stat to the value that we just passed to this function. But before we can start up our game and test this out, we actually have to register our custom commands. So we're going to go inside of the startup and now we have to add a brand new line of code into here. What we're going to do is we're going to say cmd are register commands in and we're going to pass a folder to this method. So let's go ahead and create a variable up here. We're going to say local commands and that's going to be equal to script.parent 
dot commands. So then we can use this variable and pass that into the register commands in method. And now what this method will do is it will register every single command that is in this specific folder. So then we can start up our game and test this out. Once we're in our game, we can hit F2 to, to open up the commander console. And then we can type out the modify leader stats command. And we can see by just typing MO, we have modify leader stats already auto completion right there. So if we hit tab, that command will be filled out. Now we see our first argument, which is player, the player whose leader stats we want to modify. And we can see if we hit tab again, monsters already auto completed for us because that is the only player that is currently in our game. Next, we need to provide it a specific stat, which is a string. So we could say either cash or gems. Let's go ahead and say cash, just like that. And then for the value, we need to pass a number to this. So let's just say 100. One mistake I realized when making this command is that I completely forgot when we index the leader stats to find the specific stat, we have to actually say dot value because we need to set the value of a number value. And now that we do that, it will work completely fine. So going back into our game to test this out, modify leader stats, monster, then we'll say cash. And you don't have to surround this in quotation marks, but you can if you want to. And then the final argument is how much we want to set it to. Let's just say 100. And we can see that that works. Now, if we want to reuse the command really quickly, all we have to do is actually hit up on the D-pad. And we can see the last command that we sent has been typed out for us completely again. So if we wanted to easily change this number, we can change it from 100 to 1000. And we can see that the cash and our leader stats has now been modified as well. And let's say that we also want to modify gems as well. We can do the exact same thing. So that is working perfectly. Now, if we go back inside of the modify leader stats module, where we actually create this command, we can look back at the stat argument, which is a string, and we can make that type be cash or gems. And that will actually autofill in the commander UI for us. So to create a custom type, what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the commander folder and create a new folder. And inside of here, we're going to rename this to types. Then inside of there, we're going to add a brand new module script and we'll rename this to stat. Then inside of here, we're going to replace this entire module script by saying return. And we're once again, we're going to return a function. Now the argument of this function is going to be registry and we're going to be registering an enum type, which is basically a simple way of registering a couple of strings that you're going to be using. So we'll say registry. And then the method that we're going to use on this is actually register type. Now the first argument in this method is basically the name of your type. So for instance, we want to name this stat. And then for the second argument, we're going to say registry.cmdr.util.makeenum type. And this is a function. So we're actually going to have to pass some parameters to this. The first parameter is once again, going to be the name. So we're going to say stat. And the second argument is going to be a table with multiple different strings. So if we look back at our leader stats, the two different stats that we have is cash and gem. So we're going to say cash comma gems just like that. So now we've created our type. We need to make sure that we actually register the type similar to how we registered commands. So if we go back into our startup and we can basically just copy this instead of saying register commands in, we're going to say register types in. And now instead of the commands folder, we have to actually get the types folder. So types, we'll rename that to types and then pass through the types directly into there, just like that. Then if we go back inside of the modified leader stats module, where we actually create the command, instead of setting this type to string, we can set that directly to stat. And then we can start up our game and test this out. One one thing when you're creating your own type, make sure that they're all in lowercase or otherwise it won't work. So we set that to lowercase. Now we have to go to modify leader stats and set that to lowercase as well. Then we can start it up and it should work fine. So we can go into commander, type out modify leader stats, type out player. And now we can see we have the two options for the stat, either cash or gems. And then using the D-pad, we can go up or down to select either cash or gems. Let's just go with gems and then type out the value that we want to set. And let's just say 1000. And we can see that that all works perfectly. Now there's one more thing that we need to do before we can actually use these commands in our game in public sessions. And that is adding a before run hook. Now, as we can see, there's a security warning right here that says commands will be blocked from running in game unless you configure at least one before run hook. So let's see how we can actually do that. Considering we've already created our own custom commands and our own custom types, adding a hook really isn't that hard. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new folder to commander. We're going to rename this to hooks and we're going to add a brand new module script into this. We'll rename this to before run. Then once again, we're going to replace the entire module script by returning a function. And the argument of this is once again, going to be registry. Then what we want to do is we want to use a method of the registry, which is actually called register hook. And this is going to accept the type of hook that it actually should be. And the only two possible hooks are before run or after run. And we want to use before run. Then the second argument is going to be a function with the argument of context. So inside of this function, we can basically use the context to determine if we want the command to run. Now, imagine if you wanted to make a command that will only run if you typed it out and we can easily 
actually do this because inside of the context there's actually a property called executor and what executor is set to is the player who actually casted the command so we can index executor with user id and that will actually give us their user id so for instance let's just actually print that out right here then of course we need to register the hooks so go into the startup and then we need to create a hooks variable so we're going to say hooks hooks and then register hooks in and then we have to pass through hooks just like that then we can start up our game and we can see all inside of our output and that is our user id right there that's because these commands are all registering once we join the game now that we know our user id let's go ahead and highlight that and copy it then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back inside of the before run and then we're going to say if context dot executor dot user id does not equal this specific user id right here then we are going to return you don't have permission to run this command now let's just change one number of this user id so i'm just going to add a one to the end of this so that we can test this out and see when this message is actually output so now let's go into commander and try to run the modified leader stats command and we can see that this is now printed to us you do not have permission to run this command and none of our leader stats are actually updated so now we know that people who don't have this specific user id can no longer run that command so now we've just changed the user id removed that little extra one and now this is our exact user ID and now we can run the modify leader stats command again and we can see that it is working so you're able to use hooks to basically set up permissions for who is allowed to use specific commands now to test this out once again you can go into a live game type out the modify leader stats command or whatever command you can create it and if it is executed that means that your commands are working perfectly as they should be so anyways ladies and gentlemen with that being said that's it for this video if this video did help you guys out or you guys didn't enjoy it make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn the post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more roblox from and content additionally with patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to a ton of game files and scripts that i've made in my other videos there's a link down below the description and you guys can go and check that out additionally i've published this game for free so that you guys can access it and look at all the different scripts and everything else like that that we created in this video so if you'd like to access that there's a link down below the description which you guys can go and check that out as well with that being said i'll see you guys in the next video